Hello, hello! Today's video is going to be a little different, <coughs> and by different, I mean it's going to be even more boring than usual listening to me drone on. I'm going to be reading off a very sketchy script I wrote at 2am, so please excuse any awkward pauses and mistakes. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my observations and comments on how the popularity of Hude, or Japanese makeup brushes, and the globalization of sales have changed both companies' behavior and consumer practices. So by globalization, I mean the spread of products, technology, information, and jobs across national borders and cultures. This process has long been underway. I'm just making this video now because I think the food day market has reached or is quickly approaching a critical point in its evolution. So this is the specific announcement and post that prompted me to make this video. I was very shocked at first and subsequently amazed at how it is now so much easier to buy so many more Fude brands. They've become so much more accessible than when I first started getting into them. So I kept noodling on it and I started writing things down and that's how we ended up with this video for discussion on how consumer buying habits have changed from a very niche forum, Sweet Makeup Temptations, to a bigger platform such as Reddit, and how this growing snowball of popularity have led to more and more Fude brands being available on Amazon. So a few qualifiers, this video is in no way meant to be comprehensive, you don't have the time to listen to that, and I would be writing this script until the sun goes supernova. I'm going to be focusing on Japanese brands, not Western brands, that have their brushes manufactured in Japan. And these observations of changes are going to be through an American-centric lens, because I live in the United States of America. I can't say that I was part of the Fude community from the beginning, nor can I say that I'm a die-hard collector, that honor belongs to a lot of other people. I've never had a customized brush made for me, and I've been very reluctant to use proxy shipping services, so I am a casual collector at best. And you may think, do you have a degree in international economics and trade? No, I don't, so technically I'm not qualified to make this video, but if you do have a degree in international trade and economics, please feel free to chime in in the comments. So the first point I'm going to be starting with is how the company, the brush company's consciousness of the global awareness and demand for Fude have changed their infrastructure and interface. So by client-facing interface, I mean their website, and by internal infrastructure, I mean staff and logistics. So this is an example, pretty dramatic example of how client-facing interface has changed. Hakuhodo USA's website used to look like this, but more recently it has been redone to be more modernized. This was a pretty big change for them. And this change outwardly has also been followed by a change inwardly. They now have new staff dedicated to social media and to customer service. And this has also been followed by a more recent overhaul of their Japanese website. Hakuhodo is not the only one. Tanseido has also had a website facelift to be more in line with what you expect from an online retailer nowadays, as well as a plethora of other brush companies. Something unique about Tanseido is this is one of the brands starting out that I was not able to get unless I use a personal shopper or a proxy shipping service. The fact that I'm now able to get their brushes shipped directly to me by ordering off your website is huge. This direct-to-consumer um, sales service is something that I'm finding in more and more Japanese makeup brush companies. And I'll discuss a little later why this direct-to-consumer storefront is significant. So before all of this direct-to-consumer storefront, here's another one. That's direct to consumer, albeit through a third party. There was OEM. So OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturing. And I can't find the menu. Okay. That explains what Original Equipment Manufacturing is. Oops. Okay. So equipment or Original Equipment Manufacturing is basically the company manufactures 
brushes for other companies. So say a um, cosmetic brand said, hey, I want these types of brushes. The manufacturer will make them and the company will brand and sell them. So Hakuhodo is probably known as the biggest and one of the most reputable OEMs. They're pretty much the leader. In fact, this is probably where it all started. An OEM agreement with the leading cosmetic company based in Canada, I think we can all guess what this one is, has led to a bunch of other things in the meantime. So they're well so they're well known for it, but so are other companies such as Koyudo and Chikuhodo. So by let's see Year-wise, I would say by 2010, it was easily evident that a lot of companies, a lot of reputable companies like Shu Urmura, Tom Ford, and others have their brushes manufactured by these Japanese manufacturers in Kumano or Hiroshima. And this is what happens when I go off script. <laughs> so more recently, you've also had other brands like Wayne Goss, Ray Morris, Surat, Armani. A Polish brand by a makeup artist that starts with an M I can't remember the name of off the top of my head, Sonia G and Beautylish. So all of these companies in the recent years, and by recent I mean last five to seven years, have started having brushes OEM'd by Japanese food companies. And this is in response to the increasing demand from people and increasing awareness of food. In fact, this awareness and demand has gotten so big that it made possible for the establishment of a whole new type of company. And I'm talking about Refer, the Kickstarter company that uses, well, crowdfunding to create their products and also uses their consumer base to decide what their product line will consist of. This was pretty amazing when I first heard about it. So moving on. Japanese brushes used to be much harder to get. They used to be only available on select retailers. The one I've used most, and I think most people know, is CD Japan. They carry a variety of brands. And they also have sample sales and exclusives. They ship internationally, and for me, they're the easiest to use, and usually the lowest price, because the yen to USD conversion has been favorable always. Another big one is Beautylish. This is a more recent newcomer, um, more limited selection, but they've had unique things like collaborations and unique brands. For example, Sonia G is a not she's not a Japanese company, but she has her brushes manufactured in Japan, and they're only available here. They've also had exclusives and collaborations, such as this one and some others in the past. And there's also Massage USA, which had described themselves as the retailer and distributor of Chikuhodo products outside of Japan. These are the big three retailers prior to all the new ones like Fude Beauty and some others. So choice of retailers is important because the retailers handle customer service shipping, returns, packaging, and these really differ from American market to a Japanese market to a European market. Americans kind of take for granted that you can make returns easily, but this is not expected in Japan and Europe. The fact that these brushes are now sold on Beautylish says that the Japanese companies are more willing to have returns made and also bump up their packaging standards to meet American expectations. So I see more and more food aid companies doing the following. Direct to consumer and establishment of a storefront. So we're going to talk about why this direct to consumer change is so, I guess, extraordinary. Previously, you could only buy a lot of brands only by personal shopper, proxy shipping, or an intermediate company. So Food Aid Japan is probably the most well-known uh, example of a personal shopper for Food Aid. So 
With a personal shopper, it's an on-demand service for the most part. The, the shopper doesn't keep stock most of the time. You have to contact them, tell, you, tell them what you want, and they'll procure it for you. Similarly, a proxy shipping service, you have to contact the company, request them, tell them, and then they'll get it for you. And both of these usually involve a fee of the total sale price you have to pay. An intermediate company, this is what I mean by intermediate company. So Morning Sidewalk, I don't know if they're an official retailer of Takeda or not, but they sell, they are a company that sells Takeda brushes on Amazon. They have stock on hand. They buy brushes from the manufacturer, or so I'm assuming, and they list the stock for you to buy. You never have to initiate contact. They take care of their customer service and logistics. However, the relationship is different from a retailer such as CD Japan and Beautylish. They have less influence on the manufacturer and no exclusives, though they might procure limited editions and sell those. So examples of intermediate companies are, well, Morning Sidewalk that I'm showing you that sells Takeda, as well as Hokodo brushes on Amazon. That's right. My beloved GS1 and GS2 are now available on Amazon, albeit there's a tiny bit of a shipping fee, but shipping costs are hardly the point here. The significance of these third parties, the intermediate companies listing brushes on Amazon, is that now these brands, Takeda and Hokodo, are discoverable by people not specifically looking for them. This means that they're new victims or consumers for Fude. And then another example of a third party company would be Fuda Beauty by iGenaga. So that's enough about how hard it used to be to get brushes. Intermediate companies have kind of been a step up from personal shoppers and proxy services. They make it easier for you to buy brushes. I have to admit, I've only used a personal shopper over proxy service one or two times for brushes that I really, really wanted. For normal brushes such as Tanseido, I would not purchase them because I didn't want to go through the small hassle of contacting someone and paying an extra fee for them. So my patience has paid off and I've gotten my brushes that I've wanted. So direct to consumer is a pretty huge responsibility infrastructure wise. It's a decrease in convenience for the company, but it's a potential increase in profits because the company is no longer selling their products at wholesale to somebody else to sell. So some companies decide that selling direct to consumer is not worth the headache. Just like how some artists say, ah, screw it. I want to focus on painting and let galleries or other um, avenues handle selling their art for them. So example, examples of companies that sell direct to consumer now are Hakuhodo, Tanseido, Chikuhodo, and Bishodo. However, Hakuhodo is technically not a direct to consumer company, even though the website I'm looking at says otherwise. There's Hakuhodo USA versus Hakuhodo JP. So Hakuhodo USA orders brushes from Hakuhodo JP and then they sell them internationally. So Hakuhodo USA is technically an intermediate company, just a more official one. So that aside, Tanseido truly does sell direct to consumers. And when you sell direct to consumers, you have to have staff that speak the languages of your primary demographic. That would probably be English at this point. So I've noticed that Koyudo has taken on uh, more fluent employees to handle their customer service inquiries. And that's been very much appreciated as there's much less loss in translation. So this is one brand that's previously only available to me via personal shopper or proxy service, and I did not get them until I discovered that they were available direct. Chikohodo is one that was only available via um, a retailer such as CD Japan or personal shopper, proxy for service, or Visage USA. They now do also sell direct to consumer. Bishodo, yet another one that was only previously available on a retailer, specifically CD Japan. So it's been exciting seeing a lot more companies have an English storefront and offer direct international sales. Albeit, it might not be to all countries, but I think they ship to most European and um, North American countries. This, this is 
probably the main point of this video. Establishment of a storefront on an existing marketplace, rather than having an intermediate seller or a retailer selling them. So, you can now find Food Aid on Amazon, in the US at least, and they are legit. These are the ones I've tried, Koyudo, and recently I've just placed an order for Shakuda. But this, th this is wow. I, I can't express how amazed I am at this. If you've ever tried selling something on Amazon, you'll know that they take a pretty significant chunk of the sales commission. So the fact that they are willing to lose that, but potentially gain more profit, is kind of amazing. They've done the calculations and they've decided that the decrease in convenience might be worth the marginal increase in profits. And the significance of selling on Amazon is that it's also more aggressive campaigning for the market share and consumers' attention. And this is also going to result or a result of a change in company culture. They've likely relaxed their customer service rules to adapt to the consumer culture expectations of Americans who want to, and I'm American, complain and return at the slightest provocation. Previously, people would be scared to buy brushes because Japanese companies are notorious for making returns difficult, but they seem to be much more accepting of them now. So that's been pretty, pretty exciting. Are there brands you still can't get or brushes you still can't easily get? Absolutely. I'm looking at these Kalinsky brushes from Hakuhodo and other brushes from smaller Kumano companies such as Bunshido that do not have their own websites that I will need to go through a proxy or personal shopper for. And to a lesser degree, there are also other specialty products that still um, require you to write to the company to place your order if you want them shipped internationally. It's not a third party service, but it still requires contacting an actual human rather than just hitting buttons to get your brushes. So, this may be going down with the increased sale of brushes. So, the changes I see going up, or the changes I see due to demand going up globally is more people complaining about quality control. And this is just a simple fact of numbers. The more you make of a product, the more mistakes you're going to have. And this might damage the reputation of some brush companies if they are not able to consistently assure their quality for larger quantities. And there's also the fact that brush companies that I mentioned before, such as Tom Ford, Shu Uramura, they might not stick with these manufacturers. These companies are not required to tell their consumers when they change manufacturers. For example, Shu Uramura has shifted the productions to a company in Thailand. and People who try the current Shu Uramur brushes now, based on the reputation of the old ones, might frown upon them because they were expecting more. They were expecting the reputation of the Japanese Fude companies making them. And this might negatively impact Fude companies' reputations. Of course, increased demand also is met with resistance from a limited supply. This results in either new lines of product being made or lines being discontinued. Um, you'll find something there you to Koyudo's BP series and the original Fupa series. This is just one major example of brushes that have been discontinued due to the increasing demand for natural hairs. Hakuhodo has kind of been ahead of this wave, introducing the line of synthetics. They haven't really been pushing it too hard, but the fact that they had these ready years ago in preparation for this is pretty, I guess, pretty much like a canary in the coal mine. It's kind of warning you, hey, the way we know brushes now, these wonderful natural hair brushes made of Saikoho goat and gray squirrel may not be around forever. And there's, of course, 
the price increases. These price increases are due to that limited supply to meet the increasing demand. It's getting harder for companies to procure certain bristles, Canadian squirrel in particular, and of course gray squirrel brushes as well as pine squirrel brushes have seen drastic increases in price over the years. Hakuhodo, Chikuhodo, Koyudo, Hokodo have just been some of the brands that have increased their prices. And I think some of the Hokodo brushes are now being discontinued, which is why I stocked up on the GS1 and GS2. But that aside, the competition for raw materials is mainly coming from Chinese manufacturers. The Japanese used to have to kind of compete with German and American manufacturers, but now by and large it's Chinese manufacturers that are buying larger quantities of hair and sort of out pricing, uh, pricing out the Japanese companies. And well, this is due to consumer consumption patterns. As Fude have become more and more popular, more and more people look to lower price alternatives that you can find from companies that Chinese companies that sell on Taobao and AliExpress. This is not at all condoning or criticizing these purchasing habits. This is just a comment. Interestingly enough, in 1995, Hakuhodo had founded an affiliate factory in Shenzhen, China and closed it in 1999. I wonder if these former workers at those factories are the source of the brush making knowledge for Chinese food aid today. Another change in consumer practices is people are much more comfortable with buying food aid because they have a lot more information available to them and of course a lot more of the Japanese companies and retailers are more lax in their return policies now. I wonder how this will change expectations in the future. Will food aid become so commonplace and standard that it becomes like how flying is now commonplace? Flying in an airplane was once a luxury and now people treat it as a common routine thing and they expect more and more from it as the companies are able to provide less and less. So people or so with the advance of food aid companies onto Amazon and Amazon Prime, how will people expect the other companies to keep up speed, ease of transaction, packaging and returns wise? Hakuhodo may be edged out by company by like Shakuda who offer prime shipping on their brushes and easy returns. Hopefully this familiarity with food aid doesn't lead to a decreased respect for them. When something becomes commonplace, people expect more for less. For example, faster shipping, more elaborate packaging, and the simple plastic sleeves may be replaced by something more fancy in the future. But the very definition of expecting more for less is sales. As more companies make themselves readily available to consumers, consumers will have more choices. And in order to consistently attract consumers, those retailers and food aid companies will compete with each other to make attractive offers. And consumers are going to get spoiled by attractive offers. They will expect food aid to go on sale and may only purchase them when they are on sale. This will lead to decreased purchases of food aid overall, and this may control demand and stabilize prices so that food aid don't steadily creep up every year. Yes, I'm saying that competition among Japanese brush brands may be a good thing, but the flip side is, older, more established companies may be lost if they don't keep up. So anyways, this all circles back to my amazement that you can now buy so many brands so easily. Shokuda is a brand I've been eyeing for years, and now I can buy it with two clicks of my mouse. So I'm wondering, what are some other changes or discoveries you have seen that amaze you? And if you haven't already, you should join us at Fude Brushes or Fude. Both subs are very active if you are interested in news or discussing brushes. Thank you for watching and listening. I hope you found this interesting or insightful. Hopefully both. I'll see you next time. Bye.